Good afternoon, champions. Uh, my name is Dylan, and I am coming to you live from Codename Entertainment's streaming closet uh, in beautiful Victoria, BC, Canada. Uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like to give a huge shout out to D&D for hosting us on the official D&D Twitch. Uh, it is always, uh, it is and will always be an honor to be here. Uh, and another shout out to my co-producer, Erica, who uh, is currently managing the CNE Games account, handling all the giveaways. And uh, speaking of giveaways, um, I talked last week a bit about how we have uh, a, an, an, a large amount of minis <laughs> uh, because the wonderful folks over at Gale Force 9, uh, shout out to Jean Paul, uh, send us them sometimes by the box. And so we have a Gleam giveaway right now for the contents of this box uh, for the grand prize winner, uh, which includes a collector's series Zariel that is upside down. A Planetar, that is right side up. It's also got uh, a Mad Maggie, a Lulu and Slobber Chops, a, a Silvira Savicus, well, that's a good name, uh, and a uh, Quasit, and a Thavius Krieg, uh, absolutely more or less essential minis if you happen to be running a Descent into Avernus campaign uh, for the grand prize winner. And then uh, we have these. These four uh, that are from the mostly from the Descent into Undermountain, uh, sorry, the uh, Descent into uh, uh, the Dungeon of the Mad Mage Undermountain uh, uh, set, uh, and so uh, uh, Githyanki Warrior is at the Lich and Durnan, uh, as well as another Mad Maggie because we have two. <laughs> so uh, uh, anybody who would like to uh, have a chance to win these, um, all you got to do is sign up for the the Gleam. Uh, that link has been shared. Um, but, because today is a bit of a special show, uh, for a bunch of reasons, but I will get to some of them shortly, um, we also have one of these, uh, one of the brand spanking new Tyranny of Dragons hardcovers that is the collection of, uh, uh, uh Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat into a single book, uh, with brand new art by Hydro74. Um, so that will be given away through chat. Uh, and so if you're actually watching this on the D&D Twitch right now, you will need to switch over to the C&E Games chat in order to participate in that. But that will be our, our last uh, uh, in-chat giveaway of today's show. Um, now, I, I'm not actually 100% sure which content in here is new um, versus what has, uh, like... Because I'm pretty sure this concept art gallery that's at the back that is gorgeous, of course... Um, wasn't in the other books, but I honestly, I can't remember because it's been a few years. Um, so anyways, uh, one lucky winner. It's awesome. Uh, uh, uh and good luck. So, uh, we have a very special guest, uh, here for, uh, uh for everybody today. Uh, um, uh, uh, he goes by the name of Antoine Jose. Uh, uh, now you might be asking yourself, who is Antoine Jose? Uh, uh well, those of us who are plugged into the D&D community on social media may remember a really amazing story in August? Uh, about a player whose grandmother joined their D&D campaign. Um, well, uh, Antoine is here uh, to shed some light on that story and uh, and what came after. So uh, please, everybody, give Antoine a, a warm welcome. Uh, hi, hi everyone. everyone. Yeah, I am going to um, click on these things so that I don't they don't distract me anymore uh, <laughs> in the background. Um, so I, I guess uh, first things first. Uh, before we dive into the story, uh, tell us a little bit yeah. about yourself and, uh, and and when you started playing D&D. Okay. So, hi, I'm Antoine. Uh, I'm French, so the accent, that's it. I'm a translator and I play D&D. Um, I mostly DM because I can't find anyone else to do it for me. Um, I started playing, let me see, I guess, maybe two years ago. And on the day, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, and uh, what gave you the the inspired idea to invite your grandmother to play D anD D with you? Oh, um, with my sister and my brother, we've always spent our summers with our grandparents. Even though we're all working adults and thirty, <laughs> uh, we still try to spend our summers as much as we can with them. And uh, yeah, it just happened that way. We, we were looking for someone to play with and why not grandma? <laughs> she, she'll say yes and she said yes. That's amazing. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, 
you know, I, what was that like? Because I know that you talked a bit about it uh, in your in your story on Twitter, but um, you know, you can only fit so much into brief posts <laughs> strung together. Yeah. So I mean, uh, tell us a bit about what it was like to uh, invite your grandmother to play and uh, and play D and D with her. Uh, yeah. So of course, at first she just said, "I I don't understand anything. What are the rules? I I don't get it." Um, she, but as soon as she understood that we were just telling a story and that she was a character and the narrator at the same time, she could just tell what she wants and we'd see in the, in the frame of the rules what she could do, what she could not, and it, it all went peachy on the, from there. The only thing she had troubles with was, was um, how to efficiently use a character in combat. She could not figure out how to fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not the worst thing. I mean, sometimes RPing is the most fun play part of playing D and D, yeah. right? Of course. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, you invited her to play, and I'm, I'm a little jealous because it never crossed my mind. Both I, I lost my uh, all of my grandparents by the time I was out of my teens, uh, and so it never in a million years would have considered asking them. And in retrospect, it would have been awesome. Uh, yeah. uh, because they're, it's just such a, uh, uh, such a wonderful resource of knowledge and life experience. And obviously anybody Absolutely. that you get to play D and D with, uh, uh, it can be a lot of fun in, in ways that you just almost never expect. Um, yeah. you know, after sharing, uh, your story on Twitter, um, it, I mean, I could see some of it behind you. You got a lot of positive response and a lot of, yes, a lot of fan art. There's, there are uh, 34, I think. Uh, let, let me show you. You'll see. Yeah, <laughs> please do. Back it up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see anything? Uh, it was a little, it's a little pointed up, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can. Oh yeah, we can see more of the wall now. There you go. That's very cool. Yeah. So yeah, about 30 drawings, and that's our character sheet. Very cool. Um, did you like? What was that like for you? Just watching those, watching those images come in. Uh, very, very weird. I did not expect this kind of response. Um, when I when I made when I started writing my Twitter post about it, I had less than a hundred followers. No, I, now let me check. I think I have yeah over three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> It touched a lot more people than I would have, than I would have thought, and yeah, when when I saw the first, uh, I guess you could call it fan art, I was like, yeah, if I, someone did it, we've got now a nice picture for Terminator, and then another one came, and another one, and another one, and uh, yeah, at the end of two weeks, we could fill up the wall. That's awesome, uh, and so I, I, I assume you uh, uh, printed those all out. Or something, right? They didn't. Yeah. They, they didn't ship sketches to you. They're, no, they're all, no, no, no. <laughs> they were printed. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, do, do you have one that stands out to you? Like, do you, you find yourself gravitating towards a specific image, or are you just kind uh, of like soaking it all in? I do. I love this one uh, because it looks. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's very sweet. It's very kind. Uh, it looks a lot like how she would play him, I guess. Just hugging his goose. Huh, that's awesome. Uh, that's a a, a beautiful, uh, I guess, memorial wall that you have. It looks it looks awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, uh, you were mentioning that you just started playing D and D a couple of years ago. What 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 pulled you into playing D and D? Um, may, mainly, uh, I guess, dice camera action. Although I was I was watching um, Acquisitions Incorporated for a few years before that. Oh, nice, cool. So uh, you're one of the the lucky folks who uh, has has come to the D and D community through one of the shows. Uh, yeah, and direct, directly into five E. So yeah, nothing to learn, nothing to unlearn. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, it, some of the older editions were a little more complicated, I found, um, but. Uh, you know, 5e is a great gateway. I mean, uh, my wife plays now, 
and she plays because she came home and while I was watching a stream and stuck around to watch the rest of it and and now and now we play so it's uh it's funny how that uh how that how that can come together it's an interesting yeah, it's, uh, occurrence you get you get addicted very fast yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and then the only challenge becomes scheduling games <laughs> yeah <laughs> around absolutely. adult schedules <laughs> yeah yeah um so at this point uh you know do you have a a, a favorite character like uh do you still play the character from the campaign that your grandmother's character was in um, we, uh, my grandmother's party, only one of them has played since she died. Um, so just one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with me. Um, we are planning on, everyone will be playing. I hope everyone should be playing together this coming Sunday. So we'll have to talk probably in character about what's going to happen to my grandmother's character. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I'm, think, I'm thinking just making him um, maybe part of the apparition of the Circle of Dreads he was in. Mm -hmm. So now it's just uh, instead of going on quest, he'll just give them out to other adventures. Yeah. Yeah. Do you DM the game or does one of your somebody else DM? I DM, yes. Okay. Cool. Do you, do you play and DM or do you just DM? I've only played once. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. That's... Yeah. And because I only play once because my sister wanted to try to DM. Yeah. And yeah, I just played, I played a really one note, uh, Tifling, Rogue, Swashbuckler, and uh, you know how those go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, I do. I love playing a Swashbuckler. They're fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because uh, I find that some DMs try to play and dm at the same time and so there'll be an npc character that is also kind of them that's doing yeah. stuff in the game or <laughs> or they just they don't want the distraction and they just uh they don't they don't play one because they're already playing all the npcs anyway so yeah absolutely that's very cool that's one of the best parts you get yeah. to play everyone yeah um were you were you guys playing a uh, homebrew campaign or was there one of the particular campaign books from 5e you were playing uh, we started um, the starter kits, which is Minds of Lost Endeavor. Minds. Yeah. Yeah. We started this one, and then my grandmother joined uh, midway through the campaign. So we started another thing entirely, homebrew one, and we just stuck to this one since. Hmm. Cool. Is it, uh, is it still a fantasy setting, or is it just a, just a unique campaign in the Forgotten Realms? Like it's what? very much classical fantasy. OK, cool. That's exciting. Uh, well, I, I hope that you, you know, that uh, your group has a, a good time getting back together and can oh, get will. back into the groove and enjoy, <laughs> yeah. enjoy the game. Um, we only have to go past the first few minutes and then I think we just go. Yeah. Uh, is there a, a, a particular uh, uh, adventure that you're interested in pursuing down the road or do you think you're going to continue down a, a homebrew path from here on out? Um, I started, before Descent into Awareness was introduced, I was already started to, I was trying to push my players into hell. So <laughs> I guess, uh, <laughs> well. uh, yeah, good excuse to just now buy just do it, yeah. an adventure and do it. Yeah, just, just a hole opens up and you fall. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Um, now, uh, Beyond uh, uh, having an amazing uh, grandmother who played, you got to play D and D with. Uh, you you actually play Idle Champions. I do. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, uh, I saw that uh, you you made a, it was like a, like a birthday thing for it for the anniversary. You put together some stuff. Yeah, for the second anniversary. Um, yeah. What was that? A builder cake, maybe. I think. Something like that. It's funny because when I, I tried to go back through your Twitter and find it, and all, I, it was just like a whole bunch of fan art, yep. which was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just kind of blown away by just how much there was. Um. Oh, where did I, yeah, I can't. I can't find it. <laughs> and I. I'll, I also feel weird when I'm trying to look something else up on one screen instead of looking at the camera and talking to the person that I'm chatting with. So. Yeah, I found it. That's uh, behold the cake pops. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that somebody linked it in chat too. That would be Erica. She's she's quick. Oh, thank you, Erica. <laughs> awesome. Um, do you have any uh, words of advice for uh, you know players looking for players in their groups? Uh, I mean, I think I thought it was personally really inspired that you 
you uh, asked your grandmother and sh- and that she said yes. Uh, but do you do you have any like you know uh, words of wisdom for people who are just looking for play groups and you know who they might consider having join? Just ask everyone. Someone will say yes eventually. <laughs> and I kind of forced it on my family at first. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, about a week before I told them, um, don't do anything this Saturday. I'm organizing something. We're, gonna, we're going to play something together. I just didn't tell them what it was. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. It worked. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. Uh, I've heard about that before. One of my friends uh, uh, played with their parents and all they told them was like, we're going to play a board game. And they're like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and then just, just lured them into it. <laughs> Um, that's, that's clever. Maybe I'll do that with mine. Except my, my parents are divorced. It'd be harder to get them in the same room, but, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I could probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did drag my, uh, uh, my mother-in-law into a game, uh, and she loves it. She just, she always asks when we can play more. Unfortunately, that particular group is also friends who live, uh, uh hours away out of town that we don't see often enough. So we don't yeah. get together very frequently, but, uh. Yeah, it's a it's a blast, and it's a it's a wonderful opportunity to uh, forge other connections with people that you enjoy spending time with. So, yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, do you have any uh, 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 standout moments for you uh, playing with uh, with your group? Um, I've I've talked about one on the Eddie Beyond uh, last month. There was one time. We're still not sure if that was my grandmother just perfectly role-playing her character or just her freaking out. I don't know. <laughs> uh, she was going... The, her character, Terminator. Oh, I've never said it in English. Terminator. <laughs> okay. Uh, Terminator and his party were going into a volcano, an active volcano. And... and uh, as I described the heat and the pressure and the darkness around them, my grandmother started to, to go very queasy and just uncomfortable. I didn't know if that was just her doing it or she was for playing Terminator, I don't know. Um, and at one point, she just teleported away and left everyone in the volcano. <laughs> she was just, no, nope, not doing that. And she went away. <laughs> Uh, those moments are the best. I love it when people can uh, uh, think of a good reason to do something that isn't necessarily tactically helpful uh, with yeah. just just in role playing. Um, you know, whether it's playing off of somebody else who's doing something at the table or just coming up with a unique reaction for their characters, it's it's awesome to watch. There was one time that uh, my the party was trying to to decide what to do with an Erinis <laughs> who was stuck in a summoning circle. Um, she was very menacing and they didn't know what to do. They didn't want to leave. They didn't want to break the circle. And my grandmother just, uh, as a wolf, because she was she's a dream, she, she was a wolf, she just went into the circle just to say, we're not going to harm you. Don't worry. <laughs> the, the players were like, no, we're not afraid. We, we don't. She's not afraid of us. I mean, her. We're afraid of her. I mean, us. She, she didn't get it. She just <laughs> she sat in the circle and waited until something happened. <laughs> uh, I imagine um, uh, uh, this. I mean, it comes up a lot with people who've never played before, but they try a lot of things that people who know a lot about D and D and have read either a lot of books or read a lot of source books or whatever, and they've got that background knowledge and context. Um, and it's not always easy to play your character at whatever level of knowledge and intelligence they have if you have more knowledge as a player. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of veteran players, there's a lot of things they learn not to do <laughs> and, and to avoid. And uh, new players have no such compunction. And, you know, uh, uh, thinking back to the, 
the the game with my mother-in-law and my wife and uh and some of her friends uh, i mean they all signed infernal contracts in blood because one of them did it first and the other ones wanted to do it too like <laughs> and yeah, which as a, a good idea. Uh, yeah, as a dm it was one of the most wonderful things that's ever happened to me because it's like a it's like a uh, uh, a blank check to do with them what you want yeah, awesome. <laughs> down, down the road but uh, uh and, you know and it was you know one of them was playing their character and the other ones kind of played along and not knowing any better they're all just kind of doing it but it's uh i mean it's gonna it's gonna cost them so much later um so it's just it's wonderful when people can uh Fresh eyes, I guess, coming to yeah. it. It's, it's wonderful having uh, fresh eyes. That's definitely one of my goals when I'm going to send them to hell, trying to get them to, get them all to sign contracts. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there are, there are a lot of ways to do it. There's a whole section in the Descent to Avernus book about how uh, how how devils like to pursue contracts and the, like, yeah, I read that it's how they like to do it. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah, I wish I had one of those ones to give away right now, but I don't. So. <laughs> So it'll be <clears throat> Tyranny of Dragons in like an hour and a bit. <laughs> um, cool. Very cool. Uh, ah, man. Uh, uh, I'm glad that... Was it was it Todd from D&D Beyond that you got to talk to? Yes. That's, yeah. Todd. That's awesome. Todd's a great guy. I'm glad you got a chance Absolutely. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I guess, uh, I guess the, the question is... I mean, you've already talked a bit about it, but, uh, you know, where, the, where your story... Uh, uh, for Terminator and uh, the rest of the party uh, goes from here. Uh, uh, what about uh, you? How has this um, how has this helped you in your process? Uh, you know, you're going. Uh, well, I mean, I guess uh, the grief process is the part that I'm thinking about here. But yeah, uh, like, how has this has this helped? Oh, absolutely, it did. Um, just you know, just writing a story that was just. A great way to get it out first and yeah when you have uh, thousands and thousands of people just telling you how great your grandmother was it helps it definitely helps that's cool that's very cool i'm glad that i'm, I'm glad this confluence of events occurred and allowed you to both share that story which was a wonderful thing to read and uh but also that you know the the community responded in the way that they did and you know, you got so much beautiful art. I mean, art speaks a lot, I guess. Yeah. And it, uh, it looks great. I know that um, uh, uh, our one of our artists in house here, uh, Kat, is the one who did uh, both the the portrait for the goose and for Terminator, uh, and was very very happy to get to work on it. So. Yeah, she's this this one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if. I don't know if you follow, if anybody follow, anybody knows about that on Twitter, but uh, Kat goes by uh, the Art Monkey, but with T-E-H for the yeah. um, uh, Te Art Monkey, I guess. Um, so if anybody wants to follow Kat, Kat puts out a lot of art, especially uh, for October because it's Inktober right now. So daily inked sketches, but uh, yeah, very cool. Um, is there uh, anything else you would like to share about... Uh, about yeah, I was thinking about what you were telling about um, new players who just don't know how mm. powerful um, those creatures are. That's probably why my grandmother was always using Thorn Whip as a first attack, just to try and see if 1d6 would do something. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes, uh, 1d6 works at first level when you're fighting, a, I don't know, a giant bat. It doesn't at seventh level when you're fighting a guy at door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's great. I love it. Um, I love. I love. I love go-to spells too. It's a. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, apparently I have completed an adventure. I should probably click on that. Good job. Uh, yeah, so one's a zombie Avery clones, and it's a pain in the butt. Um, but, but I get to unlock zombie Avery. Uh, please don't crash on stream. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. it's it's a funny thing because there's so much stuff running on this computer at once. <laughs> like, I guess uh, uh, I don't know how much you know about streamers, uh, but in most cases, you try to have a separate computer that does the actual streaming. Like, mm -hmm. whatever you're playing on is one computer, and then the 
you know, maybe it has the camera and mic or not, but you kind of root everything through one computer that is the one that has your broadcast program and broadcast the internet. Uh, so that you don't run into the problems that I have run into on stream many times uh, where uh, there's different uh, different issues just because. Um, you just have the one. Um, I mean, it's a good computer, uh, but it's a, it's just a lot for a computer. Um, I'm hoping that right now we're because we're broadcasting at 30 frames a second instead of 60, that that's helping a lot because it's mm -hmm. literally half as much data getting sent out. But uh yeah, it's uh, it's it's been interesting. I should put some familiars on characters and get them all out here. Oh man. Oh, so um, I'd like to hear because uh, knowing that you're an Idol Champions player, I would love to hear about what your uh, uh, gameplay experience has been like with this game. Uh, like, when did you when did you start playing? I started playing at the end of the first um, Zorbu event. Okay, yeah. Uh, so Grand Revel, no, not Grand Revel last year. Fleet's Wake last year? Was that, the, was that the one with Zorbu? I'm trying to remember the name. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, I think I've done pretty much everything. I still have a few Vajra variants to do. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, oh yeah, I've put every single one of my contracts into Strix. Oh yeah? So, so uh, she's my only event champion to have all uh, item levels above 1,158. Wow, well, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, she's, a, she's a beast. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I've... Uh, I was lucky with my like my personal loot drops. I mean, I, I guess I could go into the system and give myself everything, but um, I've always yeah. just lucked out with how well Kron just turned out. So I've been leaning towards that of late. But uh, Strix is the only champion that can blow up a whole group at once with one yeah, attack. That's, that's so, I love it. Yeah. Do you use point with Strix and like try to set up Barrowin stacks, or do you play with a more traditional formation? I've tried it a bit uh, last week just for fun, just to see how far I could go. But yeah, uh, mainly now it's just more uh, usual formations and you know just building up the debuffs and blowing everything away. Cool. Uh, now uh, I don't often get to ask players this directly, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mine you for information. Um, <laughs> okay. Who is? Uh, I'm, I'm getting the impression that Strix is your favorite character, uh, but it's not actually. It, it's Farida. <laughs> oh, Farida. Oh, yeah. Good choice. D did you read the Thank Brimstone you. Angels novels, or is it because of the I character did. in the game? Yes, oh, I did. Nice. Uh, well, if you ever get the chance to meet Erin uh, Evans at a con or something, she's wonderful. Uh, she's she's a she's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Uh, and uh, like. So, in your apparent, and in your opinion, uh, who are yeah. your uh, your your favorite characters that are currently in the game? Okay, so Strix because she's just a monster truck with me. Uh, Fairy there because she's really cool. Um, I I really like um, I re I really liked Barrowin uh, before the nerf, but I still try to use her from time to time. Just I don't know for our time's sake. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, that's it. I I don't think I've got one champion except from except for Strix that always stays in my formations. Uh, maybe maybe Cathris. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think Cathris is the only is the best one to push my wall further back than any others. Okay. Cool. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I don't really know why. Maybe I just got lucky with the items. I think. Probably, it's uh, it, it's one of the things that's the most it's the most individualized aspect of playing the game, right? Is like yeah. what what cards did you get for your character, and it dictates very much how uh, how your formations can turn out. Um, I I spent a little bit of tr time recently once Punt came out because you can slow down attack timers. I tried slowing down Strix as much as possible and, yeah, let, me too. and seeing if I could get uh, Barrowin stacks up there. And like on occasion, you get three, yeah. uh, but it was hard to get consistent. Um, and uh, but yeah, it was I tried the same thing. Yeah, it was a uh, it, it, it was tricky. It's um, it's a whole 
the whole speeding up and slowing down attack timers thing is something that we haven't dived into a lot with design. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we're pretty excited to do that. Um, have you unlocked Avern yet and had a chance to play around with him? I've unlocked him early this morning. I still haven't tried him yet. Okay. Yeah, I am. Um, I've only been trying him out a bit. There we go. I'm just going to put a guy on his alt so that he grows large every oh, time. He's big. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's a little gimmicky, but it's hilarious and it looks good. <laughs> the, uh, I'm really happy with how the, uh, the art for Avrin turned out. I mean, obviously it just looks like Todd, <laughs> um, yeah. but, uh, uh, the, like the mirror images, like they're just like kind of ghostly forms that are kind of translucent. And, um, I don't know. I think it, uh, everything turned out really well. The art, the art team here. Uh, I mean, I'm always impressed by their work, but uh, they did a really kick-ass job. Um, yeah, so shout-outs to uh, Adam, Alexis, and Michelle, who do most of the work on Idol Champions these days, and to Kat and Georgia, who do all the rest. Awesome. awesome. Oh, I, I awesome love artist, the, yeah. the Beasting Girl outfit for Strix. It's, it's the best. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm going <laughs> to... See, it's tricky. So, like, I'm... I mean, I'm pretty deliberate in having Averin in the for formation right now because it's his event and I just want to feature it. So I'd have to switch. But yeah, at the ye old Strix B Stinger here. Uh, yeah, that turned out great. I love Strix's design too. I think Strix turned out Me too. awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, also just a good champion. Um, and uh, <laughs> this is a little. Maybe a little more controversial. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm sure there'll be some devs on the other side of the wall who kind of like give me the sideways glance. But like in your opinion, okay. uh, what do you what uh, what feature or bug fix or thing are you most looking forward to us eventually doing? Like, is there something in particular that you want to see, or uh, you know, a, a rework of a particular character? Or like, you know, like what's what 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 excites you about continuing to play? What I love right now, um, probably saving familiar formations. Familiar formation saves. And yeah. not the accidental one that kind of partially came out earlier. From, yeah, from I read about it uh, this morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of in-progress stuff. Uh, to, so we are working on that. We're actually working on that, which is why Good. that bug was able to happen. Um, I couldn't tell you the ETA on it, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's in progress. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's probably the, probably the biggest time saver right now, I think. Yeah. And uh, uh, is there a particular character you're most looking forward to? Somewhere down the stretch? Either one that we haven't had or one that you would like to see? Yes. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the Aeroist crew, so Sentry and Nova and Lucius. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see what you can do with all of them. <laughs> Uh, well, you will get to see what we are doing with one of them uh, with Feast of the Moon. Uh, Good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like it might be a little premature to start dropping hints about who it is and how they work, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, come on! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, what can I say? Um, what can I say that's... I don't know, you see, I don't know that the design is 100% locked in. Yeah. Um, so it might still get adjusted, um, uh, but uh, yeah, the next Arrowist character coming will be Rhiannon's character. So, oh, cool! We're, we're pretty excited. Plus, uh, yeah. she's wonderful to work with. So, um, you know, despite the they're they're always staying late at work so they can talk to us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um, it's one of the the biggest challenges with uh, coordinating with uh, somebody who's in Europe, as you well know. Uh, being yeah. it's probably what ten thirty for you now. Yes, exactly. 10.34. Yeah, yeah it's, it's getting later. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Rhiannon's character next, and then I don't know about the order for the other two. Uh, it really is dictated by schedules, so uh, mm -hmm. I guess we'll see. Um, and also, we, you know, we've been addressing some uh, performance bugs related to uh, Keelik and Ayla's uh, Arrow Synergy stuff. That has yeah. like had some on again, off again issues. Um, so, <laughs> yes. uh, like some, imp actually, to be honest, quite impressive uh, glitches, <laughs> given the scale of them. Um, so we're still working on that too. So I hope that gets resolved before another one of them joins. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, anyways, um, I don't want to keep you up 
too late and uh, uh, bombard you with too many questions. I just, uh, I so rarely get to talk with people who uh, play the game in in an actual voice context. Like sometimes mm -hmm. uh, players will come up at uh, PAX or something and I'll usually give them more information than I should at an event, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a little less so on stream. Uh, so anyways, um, I just wanted to like wholeheartedly, I just thank you for sharing your story. Um, it, Social media and Twitter especially can be a bit of a, a challenge to dive into on a regular basis because people tend to not always share the best things that happen to them. And yeah. it was just a, it was a beautiful story to read at exactly the right time. Uh, and so, you know, I uh, just wanted to say that as somebody who got to experience it, it was wonderful and uh, just thank you for doing it. Yep. It was really nice. Thank you very much. And thank you for doing everything that CNE did, uh, putting Terminator in the game uh, mm -hmm. drawing it beautifully. Um, uh, I think it reach, it's reaching definitely a lot more people thanks to you. So yeah, thank you. Oh, no problem. Yeah, we were we were very happy to do it. Uh, I see I see a lot of players asking us if uh, Terminator is going to become a, a full-on champion or not. Uh, <laughs> uh, for now, it's... Uh, is know, he? Uh, for now. For now, he's a, a, an ally that... Uh, you yeah. come across in the and that's that's good enough for me. in the descent into Avernus campaign, I might add. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. when you think about it, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, cool. Well, um, yeah, thank you for taking time out of your evening to join us uh, all the thank way you from, for me. from France, and uh, yeah, uh, have a have a wonderful weekend, and uh, I, I, you, hope, I hope you uh, have a have a good. I was going to say have a good day because I default to that because it's 1.30 here. Uh, but it's not yeah. for you. So, yeah. No, uh, I'm just watching the end of the stream and going to sleep. No worries. Well, yeah. Thank you for uh, <laughs> taking the time to join us. And uh, we look forward to in being able to invite more of our, our players to join us on stream sometime in the future. That'd be great. All right. Thanks a lot, Antoine. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Ah. Oh my god, I'm getting spammed by Zoom to update it all of a sudden. <laughs> update, 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 just keeps popping up. Uh, yeah, uh, I was uh, really looking forward to that. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, it's uh, oh, it was such a good story. And uh, honestly, if anybody hasn't already read it, um, check it out. Uh, D&D Beyond did a, a good uh, sort of recap and interview with Antoine um, uh, that Todd put together on probably you know, a month ago now, now that I think about it, uh, around the time that all this happened. And um, yeah, it was just very cool to have somebody sharing a story, hearing about, you know, what uh, playing D&D can do just for connecting people and experiencing things together in a new way. Um, and I, yeah, I wish I had the connection with D&D in the past that I do now that I could have played with uh, one of my grandparents because... That would have been really something else. That would have been interesting. Hmm. Oh, I see that Erica has uh, shared Antoine's Twitter in a uh, chat. Um, check it out. Uh, there's a lot of fan art, um, including you know some of the some of the really good uh, Critical Role fan artists have contributed uh, Terminator um, images, and it's it's awesome. It's seriously awesome. Um, so yeah, if you want to brighten your day, uh, check it out. Just there's a, there's a whole lot of uh, uh, welcoming, just love in all those posts and all the art and stuff. And check it out. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Cool. I, too, someday hope that I can make a character that's cool enough that people want to do art for. Uh, anyways. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, the first of our two streams while Liar's Night 3 is running. Um Obviously, our latest champion is Averin uh, uh, from a show called Heroes of the Veil, uh, also known as Beyond Heroes, I think Todd said, um, because that's the logo we use and everything, so I hope that's right. Um, Averin is super good, maybe a little too good, um, but uh, I'm enjoying using him in my party. Uh, he, he's buffing all the numbers really, really well. Plus, it's, it's, I don't know, there's something really entertaining about a party with a whole bunch of ghosts floating around. And now that I'm looking at it and thinking about it, we really need a necromancer and an army of skeletons, don't we? That's what we need next. 
I'm sure the devs will hate that because it would use up way too much memory or something, but love it. Um, anywho. Um, yeah, do you have any questions for me? I know that uh, since our stream last week where we, <laughs> we uh, uh, announced that we would be removing the time gate cost uh, from events, uh, we also increased the drop rate of event tokens. Uh, and so we're going to, I'm going to be either, uh, uh, no, not next week's uh, community Q&A, probably the one following it. So that'll be November or something. Oh, excuse me. Um, we'll be, uh, 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 we will be, um, God, I lost my train of thought because I read something really funny in chat. <laughs> uh, we'll be asking for feedback about the token drop rate and seeing how, pe seeing how it feels because it's, you know, it's something that, uh, as mentioned in the, uh, change log and the patch notes that we do intend to keep an eye on and possibly update further. Uh, it's a, it's a real, real trick to get those kinds of things right. So, uh, we are glad that everybody is, uh, happier about, uh, the, the new direction, uh, for your three events. And I know that Justin promised uh, uh, that uh, he'd be putting together a dev blog talking about the future of the game and some stuff that we're working on. So I don't have an ETA on that for you, nor do I have any hints as to what that's going to be because it's going to be a surprise to me too. Um, I will be learning about it probably when I proofread the blog for spelling errors, <laughs> just like 10 minutes before it goes out. So uh, you will probably be almost as in the loop on that one as me. Uh, very, uh, very excited. Um, but uh, it's cool. It's it's um, you know that's that's the whole point of having a, a two way dialogue with our community and our players is to be in a position to you know address feedback and make changes and you know we're you know the development team of the game is never going to see the game quite the same way that the players do and so you know it's uh it's it's good to get that feedback. Um, now, a couple questions have come in over the last 40 minutes or so, and I'm just going to try and get through them quickly so I can get caught up to the now questions. Uh, uh, so just uh, bear with me for a moment. Uh, what was it? See, a giant dwarf. Baron needs tech similar to Strix that her attack speed quickens when the party's under attack instead of just herself. Uh, it's an interesting idea. I know that... Uh, I think that Baron... I, I just want to double check something. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of... Stuff that I can't talk about on stream, uh, not for lack of wanting to, because I like to be as transparent as I can be, but um, you can't always talk about everything that we're working on, especially stuff that's in progress and may or may not change. Um, but I'm pretty sure we are doing, we're changing Barrowin more at some point. I just want to double check that she's on that list. Yes. Yeah, so the, the year one champion update part two uh, Barrowin is on that list along with, uh, well, all the champions that we missed with part one. So, um, yeah, uh, feel free to, uh, shoot us ideas. Um, we have a long list of potential ideas, uh, included with, uh, uh, what we may or may not do. And so we'll see what happens when we get there. Um, I'm not sure exactly where that update is in our, our content schedule. We have some pretty big stuff that we're trying to get out first, but, um, yeah, we're we are working on it. Uh, what was it? Teach the skeletons to throw a dance. Yeah, a, necromant a necromancer that gets better with more dead champions. That's that's funny. I like it. I like the idea. I mean, I guess the the problem is, is that like every time you lose a champion, you lose buffs that are so massive that a necromancer would have to be absolutely broken in order to be able to buff that in a way that matters, right? So. <coughs> um, alrighty. Scion assist plant champion win. Ah, Scare Phoenix. Welcome. Um, I, it was a really interesting proposal you put together, and I don't know that it aligns with anything that we're planning on doing, but um, I think the team really enjoyed getting to read it. It was a cool idea. And I'd, you know, if you're willing, I'd love to uh, see you share it on the Discord. Um, admittedly, if you did already, I missed that because the only one I saw was the one that you emailed. But um, yeah, share it. Get get some more community feedback. I mean, it was a it was a really neat idea, and more importantly, uh, Scare Phoenix, it was a really unique idea. Like uh, that wasn't something that I had seen anywhere else. Uh, already, Smut Puppin. Do champions with no affiliation boost other non-affiliated people? Uh, no, no. If you're not affiliated with anybody, uh, you're not affiliated with anybody. Uh, so. 
Castle of Bones. Uh, so year three version two is rather different from version one. Did the community feedback drive the decision to move away from setting a baseline to per event champion unlock system intended to drive the fatigue? Or is that something that CNE still considers as a desirable target slash goal? Um, so, you know, we, we received a lot of feedback about the first version of uh, year three events. And, you know, we were... We were in, interested in seeing what it was like for people to actually play through it before, you know, before uh, considering making any changes. Like, you know, we were we were content with the design, and obviously it missed the mark a bit. Um, but uh, ultimately, like, we were happy with the design enough to test it, and we wanted to make sure that players could test it um, without it costing them anything serious. So we gave everybody time gate pieces to alleviate that just just so players could see what it's like to experience an event where there are potentially three champions to unlock and three sets of uh, variants and free play and so on to um you know to work on uh, you know because it's a lot and it's only going to become more and more as we move on um you know like and we got a lot of feedback and looking at that feedback and considering how how it was for players and how everything worked uh, ultimately, we agreed and decided to move away from including time gate pieces as part of the cost of the event. Um, now, the event tokens aspect to it is going to require probably some more iteration over time, especially as we have more and more potential things available. Because, you know, a year or two from now, uh, when there are four or potentially five champions in an event, uh, the current drop rate of event tokens will not work uh, if you needed to, for some reason, do all of it. And it's, you know, it'll only get more challenging from here. So, you know, it's uh, it's an ongoing discussion, uh, and I imagine it is very much on Justin's mind. So, uh, you know, we will see how that goes forward from here. Uh, I didn't share it on Discord. Where should I do it? Uh, so, Scare Phoenix, there is a, a, a create a champion kind of section on the Discord. Um, I forget what the exact name of the channel. If, I know I created it, but I I mostly pay attention to the tavern because uh, I just want to make sure that people are being nice to each other. Uh, um, so I'm just going to pull it up for a second. But there, there is a, a channel for community-driven creating characters and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, I'm just going to... Uh, there we go. I'm um, just trying to remember the exact name of the channel, so I'm just logging into the Discord on this computer so I can see what it's called. Fan Design Forge, that's what the channel's called. Uh, yeah, so Scare Phoenix, I suggest uh, dropping in there and uh, seeing what the people in there, uh, the the you know the other players and fans who uh, contribute to it, think about it because that's 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 what they're working on all the time. So it's a good spot. Um, alrighty. The mom unit. Uh, is there any way that you could not play the same track every stream? There must be more than one track from your whole game. Um, so I like this one because I find it a little less distracting. I mean, I could change it, but um, uh, all the so all the all the songs from this old game are uh, uh, for our game Shards of Titan, uh, which is a beautiful game. I might I might add. Um, you know, we have dungeon music, forest music. Music for a snow setting, music for in town, music for deserts and jungles, and so on. I just find this one like kind of just a nice tempo and uh, <laughs> and uh, easy to listen to. So I'm just gonna switch. I'll switch it up. Um, yeah, that's also cool. I mean, if it were up to me, we would be listening to uh, '90s trip hop. You know, have some massive attack or something in the background, and just like kind of a nice, a nice, just nice. You know, like a like a sexy bass line in the background, and uh, you know, that that's what I would be playing. But uh, apparently, if you broadcast to Twitch or YouTube, and you use music that you don't own the rights to, your videos get muted and stuff like that. So uh, that's why I don't do that. Anyways, so yeah, uh, here we go. Something a little bit more, I don't know, desert themed. Uh, alrighty. Personally, I miss the circle drop icons for familiar slots, but I can get used to squares. Slash shrug. Um, well, yeah, thanks for the feedback, uh, uh, Hasty Tadpole. It's one of those things where, um, you know, we're just trying to make it make sense for the UI. So, you know, the buttons that they're going onto are square. Um, and so we wanted to symbolize to the players that 
this whole button is where you can drop the familiar and then we're you know we're still making tweaks to it uh you know the update for liar's night uh three also included some slight tweaks to the the dropping of familiars and stuff in the boxes so i hope that helped um are there any new patrons in the works robin lionheart uh yes uh twitch myth roll um I would still love to see it. Kenku Champion, perhaps a CNE original. Uh, me too. Um, now, the only official Kenku character that I know of is the monk that's in that uh, the book that uh, uh, Jim Zub put out recently. Um, I'm just going to look up what that is. Uh, it just came out. What are they called? Yeah, so there's like monsters and creatures, warriors and weapons. Dungeons and Tombs, and I think it's in Warriors and Weapons. And there's a there's a Kenku monk in there that I was like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, you guys, we have to put this in our game. Um, and I don't know that it will, but um, yeah. I think Kenkus are an underutilized uh, uh, race for, uh, you know, for, for playing D&D. And part of that's because, hey, uh, the whole, like if you're, if you're really abiding by the lore and stuff, playing uh, a race that is unable to be creative because the gift of creativity has been stripped away from them by a by a, uh, a, a deity as an act of revenge and so you can either mimic things and you can, you're like you're not capable of abstract thought really like it's such a hard thing to wrap your head around and to play in an interesting way that I think it scares people off playing a Kenku um, and I don't blame them because that's in, that's intense and intimidating and so like uh, you know, personally, I've only ever really considered playing one for like a one shot where I can maybe keep up on it for a day, uh, but that's it. Um, so, yeah, I would love to see a Kenku champion. I think it would look super cool. They are, they're awesome. <laughs> Kitty, I am sweet. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Matt Mercer can play any character well though, right? Like that's just kind of, yeah. Uh, Giant dwarf. Uh, there's no psionics in the game yet, and there's no official plant based character race. Um, that's also true. Um, I don't know. So I guess like in the world of D&D, we know that Artificers are coming with the Eberron book shortly. So we're, you know, we're all pretty excited about that because it'll be a, a new official class for 5e, um, which also opens the door for like what other official classes are they going to do? I mean, I saw them. I saw uh, a D&D tweet while I was, I don't, I don't know if they tweeted while I was streaming uh, already today. Uh, uh but they uh, released another Unearthed Arcana with even more subclasses that look interesting. Uh, what was it? The Rune Knight Fighter, the Swarm Keeper Ranger, and the Revived Rogue. I don't even know what the last one is. I'm just going to... i got to click on this link now that I've seen that it's here. So let's see. Rune Knight. Supernatural Runes. That sounds super dope. Um, yeah, that, would, that sounds cool. And it looks like it's all kind of like Nordic... Influenced, giant might, defensive runes, great stature. That's cool. Uh, swarm keeper rogues, uh, sorry, swarm keeper ranger um, gathers a host of face spirits. Okay, so they, they're like magic rangers. Fairy fire web casting swarm. Huh, I'll have to read that one in more detail after. It looks interesting. Uh, and then the revived. Okay, I need to know what this is. Oh. All right, uh, it's a rogue that knows that they have had past lives. Huh, that's strange. It looks like it's some sort of reincarnated rogue that can like, that's that's trippy. Um, anyways, uh, check it out. Uh, the wizards D and D, wizards underscore D N D. I uh, just tweeted about that uh, an hour ago. So apparently it was before I started streaming, but I didn't notice until now. Uh, all right. When will we have champions who affiliate with each team and fill all the slots? Smart Puffin, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, yeah. Do you mean that they can affiliate with any affiliation? So like we tend to treat it as adventuring parties and then synergies based on the fact that those are parties together on a regular basis or have been with long-standing history. Um, I know that you could make the argument that Jarlaxle is 
can be an ally to Dritz, but like, is he really? Um, so we just kind of um, tend to focus them on versions of the characters at specific times. So, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Hmm? Uh, alrighty. The other day in chat, uh, someone asked if there were any lawful evil champions, and the answer was simply spurt. Any chance we will get another member of this unpopular alignment? Yes. Uh, Tamins, uh, can you add information about the types of opponents in the adventure to the game? This information is not a secret, but you have to go to other sites for it. Uh, that's an interesting bit of feedback. You mean so, uh, like the the enemy types that you'll see in an adventure? Um, like, where would we put that? Would we be putting that on the adventure select screen, and it would, we would just list the monster types? Uh, anyways, I can I can pass that along to the devs. I have no idea if they will do anything, but. Uh, Elabama, can you spoil this weekend's buffed champions? Oh, I can, uh, and I will. I just need to boot up a file that has the list. I'm sure it's been uh, data mined. Uh, alrighty. Uh, this weekend, magic, magic, magic weekend. Take these magical mages on a merry mission this weekend. Oh, that's... That was definitely written by Chris. Uh, Kathris, Keelik, Jim Dark Magic, Delana, and Makos. With an item for Jim Dark Magic. <clears throat> so, that's this weekend. Uh, and I'm sure I will be asked again towards the end of the stream. Mm. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, why can't you lock familiars into slots like you can champion formations? That way you can hit that save formation at the start of an adventure. Um, it's something that we're working on. Uh, we didn't want to couple that feature necessarily directly with formation saves. Um, and there's some tech reasons for why they're a little different as well. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, it's an in progress feature. It's something that's quite literally being worked on now. Uh, Garwar, welcome Garwar. Uh, how soon can we expect the dev blog teased in the patch notes? Uh, that is definitely a soon TM. Um, yeah, I don't know uh, how much. I don't really know the ETA on that one. Sorry. Uh, a mimic champion mechanic using the Kenku race. Yeah, that could be interesting. Um, Green Samurai 23. Any secrets of the craft in keeping your bud nice and high, Dylan? Um... I mean, like, crazy high loot due to working at Codename and being privileged enough to just have all the stuff. That's probably the biggest thing, keeping my number super high. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I do what I can to optimize for my formations. And with Krond... So Averin actually... Averin gets my number higher, but I don't think actually gets me further than using Warden or swapping Warden and Neris in and out to really capitalize on survival of the fittest. Because Averin is unfortunately not evil. Um, it's too bad. If he was evil. If he was only evil. Um, in fact, I should level up my Neris. Keep it leveled up. Because what I do when I get to my wall is I start swapping Warden and Neris in and out so that they can uh, kill all the things. I have a roaming slobber chops running around. Okay. Um, yeah, and so it's just <laughs> crazy amounts of gear. Um, you know, and a, a reasonably optimized formation, although I'm noticing now that my... Did I move Korth accidentally? Whoops. I need to move Korth up. Plonk. Um, anywho. Alrighty. Uh, uh, you guys put out a lot of content on a regular basis. Do you see yourself slowing down later as a result of development time or lack of characters? Um, no. Uh... Certainly not a lack of characters. There are, I mean, you know, never mind that uh, we are in progress on at least three um, groups of characters from uh, popular shows uh, that need to be completed. So there's a number of characters there. We have a pretty steady rate at which we release characters. And then there are, like untold depths <laughs> of, uh, of, of awesome characters from Forgotten Realms novels and, and other games and uh, board games and you know uh, other video games and so on like there's just a there's a there's a whole lot um, you know there are some classic ones like from Ed Greenwood and R.A. Salvatore's 
novels. There's there's two more characters, two more main characters that we're pretty much almost definitely going to include from Aaron Evans' novels. Um, you know, there's, so there's no shortage for characters. Uh, when it comes to dev time, I mean, yeah, someday we will have another game that comes after Idle Champions that we will also be working on. But um, we're never going to leave Idle Champions shorthanded to the point where it can't continue to produce content on a regular basis because um, that is the life of uh, a game that you can play for free. Uh, you know, you put out content at a steady rate or your game atrophies. So uh, we will continue to put out content at a steady rate. Um, so... You know, that being said, uh, we've put out a lot of major features lately. Um, you know, we've put out the patrons, patron system and the patron challenges. We put out feats, um, you know, uh, and we have some other big stuff kind of in a similar vein, uh, I guess, in terms of just development time, etc. that we are planning to do uh, down the road. Um, but, you know, that kind of thing will slow down, uh, you know. I don't know exactly when we will consider ourselves feature complete. Um, and focus on just generating more content and adventures and characters at that point. But, um, yeah, we are not going to slow down in the immediate future. Uh, a polymid dragon. Is there a mimic familiar? Uh, there is. Uh, there was a mimic familiar available as part of our year one celebration. So we put it out here and I will replace the gazer. So there's our Mimic with a nice little bow on top. Um, uh, it's not currently available through any means uh, in the game unless you played through the uh, year one celebration. Uh, that being said, it's something that we plan to reintroduce to the game through other means down the road. Uh, will we get more familiars? Yes. Yes, you will. Uh, mini stress. How come the gap between the ultimates is different than the gap between familiars and inventory? Please make it the same. Um... I think it's because it's actually a living thing. So if you don't have a champion from that slot out or you pull one back in, the it like it changes the size, right? Like so, you know, here's Averin's ult. If I drag Averin off the bar, it's like plunk, it's gone. And it, the bar resizes. Whereas the inventory and familiars thing is always the same. So I don't know that we're ever gonna plan to change the distance between these icons and how they function. I can pass that along to the dev team. But uh, that's not something that I would expect to see. Uh, whoa, not streaming to the D&D channel anymore? I missed the first half of the stream. I thought maybe you were skipping today when I didn't see it on D&D. &D. Um, we're, we're being re-hosted on D&D. &D. Uh, currently hosting CNE Games. Um, but what you might not have noticed is that um, if you were sitting on the D&D &D Twitch before our stream started, before they started hosting, you would still have to hit play in order for it to start once the stream has started like it might not automatically start playing uh, so that could have been it um, so yeah uh, Willow's Watcher uh, sorry about that uh, Dolphin Hands Tiger hmm. I personally would love to see some characters from the Adventure Zone namely a Taco 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 uh, sorry I've never listened to the Adventure Zone although I hear very good things about the McElroys um, both as people and uh, uh, players um yeah, that would be cool. Uh, maybe. Someday. Uh, Robin Lionheart. Someday I'll run out of adventures with patron and patron variants. But patron challenges will keep giving me stuff to do. Good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what they're for. It's, uh, you know, we don't want you to feel like when you log in, there's literally nothing to do. Because uh, usually when players feel that, that's when they turn off a game. Um, and so, we, you know, we would prefer it that there was always something for you to be doing. And also for you to always be able to make measurable progress towards a goal, whatever it is. Alrighty. Katana means Japanese sword. <laughs> uh, could we get an icon on the buff bar for Shandy's dash? Um, hmm. Maybe. Um, I'll make a note about that. I don't... That might not... like. So when it comes to something like dash, what? I don't know that that's what we would necessarily do. It might be that... Um, there's another way to do it, but I will, I'll will i pass the thing along. Uh, any chance characters from Planescape, specifically Planescape Torment, would ever be added? Oh, uh, there's always a chance. I mean, it's interesting. So just to give uh, everybody a little bit of insight into how things work for us, um, we had some pretty 
the specific guidelines for the development of content for this game and the characters in it uh, when we started. Uh, you know, 5e at the time had not really explored outside the Sword Coast. Um, and for the most part, hasn't a huge amount. But um, other planes and other stuff were kind of like a little off limits. And I'm not really including Curse of Strahd because of the whole demi-plane thing. But, um, you know, it, we, we'd asked about like, hey, like, can we do stuff from Dark Sun? Can we, you know, do such and such from Eberron? Can we, you know, like we were just testing the bounds, seeing what we could or could not add to the game. And... You know, we were kind of like, the unofficial rule was like, keep it to the Sword Coast, keep it 5e Forgotten Realms, you know, uh, try to use as much as possible more recent characters and, and stuff. Um, you know, the Companions of the Hall are the biggest exception to that, especially since we use the original iteration of the Companions of the Hall and not the, spoiler, um, a bunch of them died and got reborn uh, uh, at some point. God, I mean, I guess it was a long time ago now, but um, those things changed. So... You know, we, working within those guidelines, um, you know, it kind of stopped us from doing stuff like, hey, we're going to do this crazy thing from Planescape. We're going to introduce Sigil and the Lady of Pain. It's like, well, no, it's Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. We need to keep it focused on the Forgotten Realms. And justifying stuff from Planescape is kind of tricky. Um, exceptions to that have been the great Modron March event that we have in the game because, hey, they do march through the, all across the Prime Material Plane at some point and having them march through Toril is totally a thing that can happen, so we got away with that. Um, Warden, uh, you know, at the time, uh, you know, there was not an Eberron book out officially in 5e, uh, you know, although the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron had come out. And so we asked, like, hey, can we do a Warforged character? And they said yes, and so we did. Um, so there's another exception. And then, you know, there's also we included uh, Nordum the Modron, uh, or Nordom or Nordom, however you want to say it, uh, in one of our variants. Um, and so, you know, like, we've kind of eased a little bit outside that. But also, uh, since we started the game, uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica has come out. Uh, um, Eberron Rising from the Last War comes out uh, in like a month. Um, I don't know what's coming next, but I am sure more. Uh, so, um, you know, in that case, Taking all of that into consideration, will characters from Planescape Torment ever be added? Maybe. It's a it's a it's a maybe now. You know, it used to be a probably not, but now it's a maybe. Hellish Train. Dylan, how do you think a cavalier fighter would work in Idle Champions? If you could design one, what kind of mount would you give it? Um hmm. I would love to have some sort of death knighty looking dude on a, a nightmare. You know, like the guy that's on the cover of the Descendant to Avernus book beside uh, Zariel. What's his name? Har Haruman or something like that. The, uh, uh, yeah, that would be cool. Um, just because that's, you know, goth edgelordy awesomeness. Um, you know, and super metal. Other than that, I don't know. I think something fun. I would love to have a champion where it's a cavalier fighter, but it's like a, they're like a sprite riding a wombat. You know, so they don't, so they actually don't take up a huge amount more space than like a halfling in the formation because it's a sprite riding a wombat and they've got their like, you know, they've got their weapon, you know, using a glaive or something, which is like, you know, like a small spear for most humanoids, but uh, for the sprite is uh, this huge badass piece of weaponry. So that'd be cool. Sprite on a wombat. Um, Giant Dwarf. Uh, hope the new features will deal with the vast amounts of champions are just sitting there doing nothing, especially the poor champions that do uh, that do anything in Patreon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not spoiling anything to say that previously on stream, Justin has mentioned that we want something for bench champions to do. That, you know, we are at 51 champions now, I think, with Averin, Um, which means that 41 characters at least... You know, uh, 41 characters are not in the formation doing anything. It's a lot. It's a lot of characters. Um, so, yeah, something for them to do is on the horizon. I don't know if that's what's going to be included in this devlog, but, uh, yeah. Uh, alrighty. Uh, question, something that I hadn't thought of before. Does the Mimic Familiar have a name, even just used in the office? Uh, no. It's just a Mimic. Uh, alrighty, what spell currently not represented would you like to see in Idle Champions? Hmm. Hmm. 
I would love to see one of the... Uh, I'd love to see summoning spells, to be honest. Um, you know, whether it's Conjure Elementals or uh, Conjure Fae or something along those lines. Um, you know, and... Yeah, just like being able to summon more allies. Like having a having a summon that's cool enough that like you could kind of count it as an eleventh slot in your formation or a, or a tenth slot in your Grand Tour of the Sword Coast fan formation because you've summoned something that has a temporary benefit to the party. Um, you know, I'd love to see that kind of stuff. Uh, alrighty. Would you ever consider having a contest or promotion for a player to have their character designed for the game? Um, it's something that we've talked a little bit about internally. Uh, it's a tricky thing because the content schedule is is the way that it is out of necessity in most ways. Like, um, there's how much time it takes to design, draw, animate, etc. A champion, which is you know not insignificant. It takes quite a lot of time. Um, but then there's also, you know, we have a long list of characters from books that we still want to get to. We have a long list of partners that we're still working with uh, and their characters to come. Um, and then, you know, there's also, man, you know, like who knows what's down the horizon, right? Like, you know, the D&D book in September next year might include some character that we're like, we need to add them. So um, we just kind of, uh, you know, fitting a player character in that because... A lot of the time we try to our best to design characters that fill needs and like try not to get too repetitive. So like we try not to release multiple DPSs back to back or multiple supports back to back or uh, you know what have you. But then we also try to like mix up alignments and race character combina uh, race class combinations and so on. Um, so fitting a player's character, whatever it ended up being, would be really challenging in that. And then also like what how do we measure which one we're doing like how do, how do you how do you pick i guess you know like is it just chance like you draw you do a random draw like well maybe one character's design is amazing and perfect for the game and another one's is is less so uh you know and you kind of like you get locked into something like that so it's like it's a, a challenging thing to implement it's a challenging thing to try and make a lot of people happy with and we have a lot of other criteria that we already take into account with each character we create so um you know, having a uh, having somebody's PC make it into the game is a lot more challenging than say, um, you know, having the community help direct the creation of a character. Where we're going to do a C and E original. This is all hypothetical, but we're doing a C and E original. You can choose between we pull you on races out of a selection of ones that we're looking at. We pull you on uh, classes and or subclasses out of a selection that we're looking at. Um, and then we, you know, pull on alignment and a few of the other things, and then we take it from there. Um, you know, that could be a thing, maybe. Uh, but, uh, yeah, a lot harder to do something like somebody's actual PC. Uh, now that it's closer to the end of the year, can you say for sure if we're getting a new Evergreen Champion in 2019 or not? Um, I think Justin actually answered that with a truthful truthful answer on the discord recently and people thought he was joking um so yeah uh i'll probably have to leave it at that uh hellastream i meant to ask this uh when champions that transform like walnut and tyrell do their core stats change as well giving them a chance to qualify for different buffs uh they do not no um now in theory it would only be their strength dex and con that change um to whatever animal form that they're taking on uh but no uh we we haven't done that um, all right i may have asked this before but i forgot the answer how come in free play they don't give about silver chests every 50 plus levels instead of just the first 50 levels um it's be well smut puffin that's because what happens is you qualify to have a silver and or gold event chest if you have played long enough to complete at least 50 levels, that's it. That's that's the thing. Pushing past that, um, you're grinding for event favor. Um, uh, Zanzibar the Hippopotamus. Can we get more characters that speed up the game like Deacon and Shandy and Minsk? Um, so, yes, um, that will probably happen. Um, that isn't to say that we are working on one right now, but 
uh, there is always a chance that we will do something like that again. It's also a tricky thing to do um, in that it, it's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't want to rely too much on champions that speed up progression in some way mechanics because we don't want everybody to feel like they have to use all those characters all the time, um, which is what would happen, especially if they're spread across a lot of different slots. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's always a chance that we do more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very likely to happen in some form. Uh, sign, a spark sign. What is the best way to get Quent's achievement? Oh, that is a great question for um, uh, either Silesa or Soul Reaver or Garwar. Um, because honestly, I cannot remember how I got it. Uh, <laughs> I would have to look it up. Let me just... Oh, I haven't finished gyms. Where's points? Max's count them off ability for six consecutive seconds. Um, so it looks like I got that through idle play um, just while I was uh, playing the event. So I actually don't remember how I did it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's an easy, like a targeted way to do it, but I honestly can't offhand remember how I got it done. Spark sign, sorry. Uh, let's see. A polymer dragon. You guys have Jarlaxle and Dritz in the game. Is Entreri going to be in the game? That is a great question. Um, yes. Eventually. Uh, alrighty. More crazy champions, please. Um, Okay. Alrighty. Any thoughts about creating generated quests that present monsters and bosses from other quests at random to add variety to the weekly grind component of the game? There's so many cool levels and creatures that we only see once or twice when playing optimally. Uh, that's an interesting idea, Mobile HQ. I mean, I'll, I'll pass that suggestion along to the devs. I don't know if it's something that they'll want to do. Because um, there's probably some tech-related criteria in there that I wouldn't understand. Um, but, uh, it's always a, it's always a possibility. Uh, alrighty. One way you might sneak in references to non-forgotten realms characters would be as liars, knight NPCs wearing costumes. <laughs> um, well, I mean, we kind of do that already, don't we? Um, you know, did you guys really look closely at the NPCs, uh, during, uh, the liars, knight escort quest? I mean, closely at them. Uh, alrighty, reading this next one while having more water because apparently my throat wants to dry out a lot today. Uh, alright. Uh, so if we want to get our characters into the game, the easiest way is to become a famous D&D streamer. Uh, I mean, that's a way that could help. I mean, we're not going to put every character from every show ever into the game. It's, it's cool. And part of us, like, so part of it is, like, it's really something that's fun that we like. We like the idea that if you have one or more shows that you like and books that you like from D&D &D and you like all that stuff, that you can make the formation of your dreams using characters from all those things, right? Like, you know, you can take Averin from Heroes of the Veil vale and put him in a formation with, uh, you know, with uh, Evelyn, you know, who I guess most recently has been on a lot of uh, AI in main main stage AI games and you know you can also have Minsk and Boo and you can also have uh, you know uh, etc like you can just kind of like create uh, create factions using um, characters from a bunch of the different things that you love which is awesome so we like that um, but that isn't the only way to get characters into the game it's just it's one of the things that we are currently doing um, because people have such strong connections with so many of these characters so yeah uh, Willow's Watcher. I have to give you all huge kudos for including Terminator as an NPC. I started bawling when I saw he was included. The story behind Terminator is such an, well, excuse me, an amazing one, and that was an amazing way to immortalize both the character and the player. Um, thanks, Willow's Watcher. I mean, you know, it was a, it was a really wonderful thing to do in a fun, um, in a fun way, that 
you know, it's just kind of fit in naturally. And we were able to include Terminator in that way. And who knows, maybe Terminator will pop up again from time to time throughout the Descent into Avernus campaign. Is this something that we were, we were happy to be able to include? Question, what did Justin say on Discord about when we will get an Evergreen Champion? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should say. Uh, so I, I guess my worry around it is like I, I remember exactly what he said uh, because he has said it both on the Discord and, and, and around the office. But my personal worry is like anything that's that far out uh, uh, is... Uh, may change and I don't I don't want to once again talk about an evergreen champion and then have it get pushed back uh, by some large amount or something so um, you know hopefully Justin feels like sharing more uh, down the road uh, what do feats that increase the ability score by one do if the modifier isn't changed um, so you're wondering about the so I mean all it does is make you eligible or ineligible um, for different uh, variants and some formation abilities. So you can add enough wisdom to suddenly be uh, eligible for Narax gets their eye focus, or you can add a point of constitution to make yourself eligible for uh, Vajra patron adventures or something along those lines. Um, the modifier, which is to say, you know, if you have an odd stat, uh, like 16 con and you got plus one con on Ayla to go to 17, it would not change the mod modifier at all. Um, but again, it's it's just for eligibility for variants and buffs. That's currently. That's that's all it is. Whoops, I accidentally hit that button. There we go. That'll stop it from stuttering. Uh, alrighty. Can we get another Lycanthropic champion? As we have no one to leverage the extra damage for. Werewolves in the Mist for Mert. Um, hmm. Interesting. I mean... So it's funny that you mentioned that, uh, Giant Dwarf, because at one point we were talking about... Uh-oh. My throat's getting dry and I'm starting to get sniffly. That's not a good sign. Uh, at one point we were talking about our version of Neris being the werewolf Neris from that story arc during the Heroes of Baldur's Gate comics. Um, and then ultimately we decided not to because we wanted to focus on Neris in a different way. And we you know, like came up with this funky ability around spiritual weapon because it just seemed like an interesting way to do the character um but uh that being said uh yeah we uh, are light on werewolves or just wear things um i'd love to see something like a a, a goliath werebear so it's just a giant bear man <laughs> or bear woman uh, uh taking up space in the formation so that would be cool uh, Dylan, if characters speed the game up too much, would it not break potions ex eccentrically? Um, it would be negative impacting to the potions. I mean, when you think about it, uh, I mean, Shandy is a very popular character uh, because both uh, Shandy is a good design and, like, we like Shandy, but also Shandy has dash. And to date, that is the first time that we've ever had something that a uh, champion that has the effect of a... Uh, uh, potion of speed, basically, that's on all the time, and that's pretty insanely good. Doing more things like that would, you know, devalue potions of speed because if it's, let's say let's say you had two or three champions that could do what Shandy does, if you're that close to the cap on speed, it's super easy to hit the cap. What's the what's the point of the other ones? So, I don't know. Um, you know, it would be uh, that's just you know, it's, yeah, it, it would not necessarily be a good thing for potions and items and yeah it's something that we have to consider when we design characters like that uh, do you remember your favorite party dialogue from any event and what was it um, the dialogue between uh, Rosie and Strix bee stinger during their like busy bee stingers or whatever the variant was called during festival of fools year two um is my favorite both because you know because kate and holly contributed directly to it and were participating in that dialogue which meant that it was truer to the characters and you know how they think and feel about each other and other things and it was just yeah that was probably my favorite dialogue plus it was funny um I don't know if you guys noticed this because maybe you don't watch Welch's Game Juice or you haven't paid attention to the streams or you haven't watched any of those shows and stuff, but like both Holly Conrad and Kate Welch are hilarious. They are so funny. They're uh, awesome people who are brilliantly funny. So 
Um, that's easily the favorite overall thing. I don't remember it all off the top of my head, but I just remember that all of the discussion being interesting. So. Can we have Elminster in the game, please? Elminster is in the game. <laughs> uh, but I assume you mean as a champion or a patron or something. Um, yeah, it's it's very likely to happen. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of were champions, is there any chance we could get a were raven? We've been to Ravenloft and Barovia, and they show up in the Wizards of the Wine. They sure do. Um, that's an interesting... Uh, question, Hellstream. Um, where ravens? I mean, it's possible. I mean, you can kind of do a a, a, a lycanthropic version of most things, but uh, the were ravens in the Curse of Strahd campaign are really interesting. Um, yeah, hmm. that's a that's a hard possibly. How to get such speed boosters? <laughs> Uh, on more speed, I always I hate to always compare to Crusaders Lost Idols, but there is a double drop slash kill mechanic there. Is that feasible for idol champions? Um, that's I, I mean I kind of have to defer a lot of those questions. Uh, basically, like we don't want everything that we have in this game to be a copy of Crusaders. We want this to be its own unique experience. Like they share similarities in genre, but you know the way that damaging monsters works in Crusaders versus in uh, Idle Champions is completely different. And, you know, formation abilities and stuff. Like, we just wanted to, like, we wanted to create new new design space and something that feels distinctly different. And we don't want to carbon copy a whole bunch of features from Crusaders into this game, necessarily. Uh, just so that, oh, yeah, the graphic system's the same, or the mission system's the same, or whatever. Um, Anything that we take over, that we consider um, adapting from one game to the other, uh, we will, you know, evaluate how that impacts that game specifically, and whether or not we want it to be unique in its own way and do other things. So, yeah, that's the uh, the best I can offer. Goliath Stone Sorcerer Were Raccoon. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, alrighty. Uh, new speed champion in slot six. Uh, oh, so, like, it just shares a slot so that, you know, all speed champions, like, we have the slot that is the speed slot from here on out. Um, I don't know that that's something that we'll do. Uh, yeah. Like, so, I guess the thing is... Oh, God, I hit the minimize button again. Um, I guess the thing is that we want your experience with the different ways of speeding up progression to be different from champion to champion and for it to be a choice as opposed to an automatic inclusion each time you want to use one. So, you know, that's something that we like to keep in mind when we're putting together characters. Uh, it's got to be a choice, you know? Like, Averin is a dedicated support in slot 11. You know, two of the characters in slot 11 are dedicated DPS. You could you could argue to a degree that Strix is a support because she does have a debuff, but it's, you know, uh, it's, it's less strong than, say, a bunch of hex stacks. Uh, and so you're making a choice to use 11 as one of your formation slots as a support slot from slot 11 instead of, you know, one of the other potential support slots. And so, like, we want to offer more choice. So, yeah. Uh, why Azaka isn't labeled as a gold champion? She has a gold find ability, an item, the boosted ability, and a whole gold paper. Yeah, so Dazi9, that's kind of an interesting thing because I don't think that Archon is listed as a gold champion either, but Archon also can, you know, influence your gold find. Um, I'll just make a note for the devs because, like, maybe that's something that they're intending to do somewhere down the road. It's definitely, for us, a very low priority thing. It's not something that we're thinking about all the time. Although, obviously, with the advent of a champion like... Um, like uh, Averin, who relies on tags, uh, players will be interested in, uh, you know, champions having as many tags as possible in some instances, even though I don't think gold is one of the ones that Mirror Images supports. All right. Uh, could the false idol taskmaster from Crusaders be added to idol champions as a familiar without annoying any lawyers? Um... I don't think so. Because uh, keep in mind that everything that goes into Idle Champions is owned by Wizards of the Coast, right? It's This is a D&D &D game. It's a licensed D&D &D game. You know? 
like the uh, yeah. Uh, so that would be like giving our logo away in a way. I don't know. Uh, it's a that's a hard unlikely. I guess I'm not an expert on that subject. Alrighty. Uh, have C and E considered any of the Ravnican races for idle champions? Loxodon and Minotaur are great races, and having a champion from those races would be fun as heck. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, they would be awesome. And, I mean, Minotaurs have made appearances in many places outside Ravnica, but uh, obviously, you know, having some sort of Boros Reckoner uh, champion would be kind of cool. Um, it's something that I've asked about and I've mentioned in terms of, like, we don't have a lot of monstrous or non-humanoid non-human uh, sorry, non-human tiefling or elf champions, you know, like we got lots of humans, got lots of elves and a couple of half elves and we got lots of uh, you know, dwarves and we don't have a lot of you know, we have one lizard folk, we have one firbolg, we have one half orc we have one tortle you know, et cetera. Like, there's a whole bunch of ones that we just don't have a lot of. Um, so, yeah, having a Loxon and a Minotaur, that'd be awesome. And I would love it. Uh, would your character ever make it to this game? Um, I guess, which one? Like, so I have two characters that I actively play right now. I have the one in my home campaign who is a, an Azamar, a Protector Azamar cleric of the Death Domain. Um, battling his way through the Tomb of Annihilation with a, a party of close friends. Um, and then I have, for the game that we play in the office at lunch, I have a, a character right now because my my Shadow Kai Warlock died. Uh, I have a, a, a Yuan T uh, rogue sorcerer um, who's also a blast. Uh, will they make it to the game? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, sure. I mean, I would love to. It would be super cool. Uh, I don't know how likely that is. Um, you know, doesn't seem doesn't seem likely. Xavier Woods Goliath would be awesome. Um, I think so. I mean, I don't know how much I should talk about that. Uh, when it comes to things like characters from the Ack Inc. stage games, um, every all the characters are individually owned, right? So, you know, you have to do that. But in the case of Savior Woods, or maybe I should say uh, WWE superstar Savior Woods, is that I don't think he actually owns it. I think it would actually be a thing where you would have to negotiate the usage rights with World Wrestling Entertainment, uh, which I don't think is something that we're going to do. <laughs> um, so as cool as it would be, and like, hey, maybe it'll happen. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it seems... A lot less likely than some of the other ones, yeah. Uh, so not to not to spoil that um, too much, but um, yeah, uh, there's a whole lot of so. Just to shed a tiny bit of light on that in a really indirect way, like I don't know how many of you watch Saturday Night Live, um, but one of the things that happens when somebody becomes one of the not ready for prime time players is they sign a contract that basically ties them to SNL um, for a bunch of stuff. So they can make feature films, but they make a few. Um, they have to make a few for SNL first before they can make them for themselves. Uh, and so like, there's a bunch of weird stuff around that. And it's just like, I don't know the nature of uh, Xavier Woods' contract, um, but because he performs on stage and because he's performing on stage as WWE superstar Xavier Woods, I don't know how the licensing part fits into that. So, you know, um, yeah, that'd be utterly meta. Hi, I'm Vince Mc Hi, Vince McMahon. I want to talk to you about borrowing Xavier Woods D and D character for my idol game. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to say it's impossible because, like, maybe it's more possible than I think it is. But, um, you know, for Strix, we can call up Holly Conrad and get that worked out. Uh, for, um, I've already forgotten Xavier Woods' character's name, the Goliath, um, the one who likes cheese. Uh, you know, I think it's like 
you call his agent. You go through his agent, find out whether or not you also need to deal with lawyers at WWE or with Xavier directly. And like it, it becomes a much more complicated thing. So um, I really, I don't know. Yeah, it, maybe, maybe not. It would be cool, wouldn't it? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying we don't want to. It's just like it uh, would likely lead to some more complicated discussion and negotiation than a lot of other characters. So, uh, is there any way we could get a way of temporarily suspending a potion of speed? You mean like turning it off or pausing it? Um, you know, uh, I mean, I can. I we've had questions related to that and other potions uh, a few times. Uh, I think if anything is going to happen, we would give you the ability to cancel one, but I don't think we would give you the ability to pause one. So I don't know. I can pass that along, uh, Zealous Four Hundred Four, but we'll see what happens. What kind of response we get? Uh, we also don't have a Triton. No, we don't, Giant Dwarf. And uh, I tried to design one for us at one point and then was told to make a Warforged instead. So, Can we have a series of upgrades to Minsk's Boastful? Any help to get back to our wall faster would be very appreciated. Uh, well, Red Seer, have you tried Potions of Speed? <laughs> um, because that is why they're there. Um, you know. Uh, all right, that is, oh, that's the list. That's the list. Quick, ask more questions or I'm going to shut down the stream. No, I'm not going to shut down the stream. Uh, I'm going to plug our stuff. So uh, for those of you who may have just joined, maybe you're somebody who joins the second half of a stream instead of the first. Um, a little over a week and a half ago now, the amazing folks over at Gale Force 9 sent me a box. And in this box, minis and some you know styrofoam filler to stop them from smashing around too much. So um, we are doing a Gleam giveaway and we will be announcing the winner of said giveaway uh, during next week's show. Uh, and if for some reason this sniffle that I'm getting right now turns into a cold that makes me not here next week, we will announce it in some other way. Like we will, people will still win. So um, one grand prize winner will be earning a Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus Zariel D&D Collector Series Mini by Gale Force 9 as well as a Planetar, Thavius Krieg, uh, Silvira and Savicus, uh, sorry, Silvira, Silvira, Savicus, and Quasit. The Quasit is like there in the corner of the mini. There's like a lot of glare here. Um, Lulu and Slobber Chops. Uh, Lulu is a, a holy font. It's like this one package has like extra glare on it. Um, and then finally, a Mad Maggie. So that will be uh, for one grand prize winner. And a runner up, instead of going to hell, will be going to Undermountain. Yay, way better. Uh, so uh, we have a, a Durnan of the Awning Portal, uh, Is at the Lich, and a Githyanki Warrior from the Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Oh, God. Collector series. I got a. It's still good. Um, uh, so, uh, well, that as well as a Mad Maggie because we had to. Um, so, uh, if that interests you, and we, we really will ship this anywhere in the world, hopefully you live somewhere where this can go to you. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, one grand prize winner. Uh, one one runner-off winner. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, uh, good luck to you. Uh, sign up for the Gleam, and it could be yours. And then finally, um, our next and final giveaway of the stream will be Tyranny of Dragons. The new one. The new Tyranny of Dragons. Um, printed by uh, uh, Wizards of Coast only just recently. It is the combination of Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat, uh, the two first 5e adventures, into one single book with a brand new cover by Hydro 74 of Tiamat, Queen of the Dragons. Uh, now, I I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure uh, that all this awesome concept art at the back is unique to this book. I don't think it was in the other ones. But also, I've been wrong before. I could be wrong. Oh, sweet. There is a killer picture of Dritz to Erden. Here in a with a suit of armor, 
on that looks really badass. Nicely done. Um, yeah, and a bunch of NPCs and some awesome dragon sketches and some other stuff. It's it's totally killer. Uh, so we have one of these to give away, um, and we will just we will we will we'll ship it to you wherever you may be. Um, so if you would like this, type exclamation mark tyranny uh, in the chat. Uh, and if you're over on the D&D the &D Twitch right now, you'll want to swap over to the c &E Games Twitch just for this part. Um, and uh, yeah, Tyranny of Dragons. This could be yours. This could be your copy right here. I haven't dropped it yet. Um, it still smells like a freshly printed book. Um, it looks real shiny. Um, and also it's extra dense because it, it is it is what was previously two 5e books printed in one book now. So it's... It's a whole lot of extra book. It's a double book. So, uh, yeah, pick it up, and uh, good luck. I haven't taken it into the bathtub yet. No. I, I do have a bad habit of taking my phone in the bathtub where I'm, like, soaking, and I'm just, like, browsing my email um, like a just a, like a degenerate, addicted human. Um, so, anyways, I got a couple more questions. I don't need to continue the plugs. All righty. Genasi Champion Wen. Um well, Hellastream, uh, what I can say is, uh, what can I say? I can say that there is one Genasi champion who is a member of the High Rollers Eros team, who will eventually be coming to the game. As well, um, uh, Chris has been trying to get a Genasi champion into the game when he can at some point, and I've seen the designs, so um, I don't have an ETA for you. And it won't be before the end of 2019 because the next few champions are locked in. Um, but yes, there is there are Genasi champions coming. Uh, who does the damage when Neris hits something with her spectral weapon? Does it count towards Bud? Uh, I believe it's the the champion who does it. Um, so if you're if Kron is your DPS and the spiritual weapon is with Kron, then that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, Alrighty. Um, Speaking of Minsk, we need a better way of anticipating slash controlling favorite enemy type abilities. Um, do we? I mean, if you play 5e, uh, you pick it once, and then you can add another one at a later level. But um, it's not something that you get to add a lot of. Um, you're like, I know players would prefer it if you could just swap your favorite enemy to whichever is on screen, but then it would just be a generic damage increase buff. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying we won't look at it. But right now, for the most part, we're actually really happy with where Minsk is. Uh, he is an absolutely killer DPS um, for out of the core champions. He's an awesome DPS champion uh, that works great for players who are new for a long time. Uh, sorry, Delana, but you don't replace him when he comes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe we could change something about it, but uh, not something that we'd be focused on right now. Uh, all right, what monster from the Monster Manual would you love to see represented in Idol Champions as a boss? Uh, an Aboleth would be cool. Um, Garwar, now that you've got 50-plus champions in the game, congrats! How long do you think it will be before we get something to do with the 40-plus champions sitting on the bench? Um, that is a great question. I know that it is something that has been on Justin's mind for a long time. Um, just like uh, the patron system, we were first talking about the design of the patron system at the beginning of 2018, in like February or March. Uh, and lo and behold, it came out in August 2019. So part of that was, I mean, we were busy. We were a smaller team then and busier because when you launch a game, you have a lot of, not catch up to do, but like it takes a lot to get a game into a completed enough state that you can hit your your deadlines on with such a regular cadence that you can start fitting other things in and like we've hired a few people since then and so on and so like we you've noticed that we've accelerated the pace at which we release features over the last few months and i know that something tied to bench champions is on the horizon when i couldn't say but yeah uh have you considered doing a twitch plays idol champions like the twitch plays pokemon could be a fun event over a weekend uh we did actually try that and it was a nightmare to keep running because we, we like we patch our game so frequently, right? And we're always adding new features and stuff. And so, yeah, we, we did do a Twitch Plays Idol Champions for a while. Um, and it was it was kind of fun, but it you know it wasn't as popular as we would have liked. And uh, yeah, we eventually stopped. 
Uh, but it did exist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what can we expect from this dev vlog? I don't know. I will be learning it as as other players do. Uh, what's your opinion on wearing multiple suits of armor on top of each other? Should AC stack but give a huge dex penalty and move speed buff? Debuff? Um, I think that... So, like, I guess it depends, right? Uh, just thinking about, like, actual suits of armor. Uh, I mean, your, your mobility slash dexterity gets severely hampered the more armor that you wear, right? I mean, there's a reason that you get um, your uh, uh, disadvantage on stealth checks if you're wearing... You know some of the heavier suits of armor in the game, uh, in just in D and D, not in Idle Champions. I don't think you should get a stacking AC because AC doesn't just refer to how hard you can get hit and shrug it off. Because like when you think about it, for a monk, what AC refers to is how nimble they are or how how agile, like how dexterous. Because you know both how wise and insightful they are as well as how nimble they are plays into how high their ac is so i no, i don't think that wearing multiple suits of armor should boost the ac i think you know how well somebody can use the armor is what should boost ac in different ways so i don't know if that's a good answer for you cobra king avert but that's that's what i'm sticking to vampire champion when i don't know i hope soon I really want us to include, include Strahd as an overpowered champion in, like, you know, slot 13 or something, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, Abhorsent. Uh, with Baldur's Gate 3 in development, do you envision any synergy or collaboration or promotion opportunities when it's eventually released? I hope so. If only so I could find out information about Baldur's Gate 3 in advance of it coming out. I would love that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, uh, we could always talk to Larian about it, but uh, who knows? I mean, I imagine their hands are full with Baldur's Gate 3. It is an absolutely monumental undertaking to put together. And, um, you know, I don't know if anybody saw, they uh, they put development on hold for their other Divinity title that they were working on at the same time to focus on Baldur's Gate 3, which is the right choice to make. It's a, it's, it's a high-profile dream gig for a studio like theirs, so... I'm crossing my fingers for them. I hope it goes awesome. Uh, I prefer to imagine the not active champions as, quote, on the airship. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting idea. Uh, and finally, Giant Dwarf, opinion, just my guess, but I think they might have meant that it'd be nice to have a way to preview what you're going to fight in an adventure. Granted, it should, have, should come about after having completed the base adventure. Um... Maybe. I mean, I guess there's a few different ways you can in interpret that, right? Giant Dwarf, like, having the enemy monster types included in the adventure would be an interesting thing to include because it would allow players to make their choices on the fly. At the same time, like, if you're playing, you can always mouse over, hover over an enemy, and it'll say what their enemy type is. And so you can make your choice with Minsk to favor one of those right then. Um, many players are right in waiting until area 50 to see what that boss is and if it's something that shows up regularly throughout the adventure hopefully like like a humanoid um you can oh excuse me uh, you can pick that for minsk and then that's that but and then also you could just burn through potions of specialization swapping as needed but that's obviously uh, not really sustainable so there's a lot of different ways you can think about it yeah um i didn't quite see who won the book F shut, F shut, F shut. F shut. Well, congratulations, F shut. Um, I got a quick question for you. Uh, currently, the only thing in this book is like there's a tiny sticker that says that it's Codename Entertainment's book right now. Um, but uh, if you want, I will take this around the studio and get the uh, designers of Idle Champions to sign one of the inside black pages. Uh, is that something you would like, F shut? Let me know, and I will do it. Uh, all right, so um, we're just getting towards the end, so I'm going to answer the last 
question or two, and then uh, and then and then wrap this up for this week. Uh, okay, so uh, conspicuous compiler question. I know you can't talk too much about the future, but since time gate pieces are not presently a currency for unlocking event champions, should we expect there to be currency sinks for time gate pieces, or would it be reasonably safe to use them to get event champions now? Um, so right currently, the only way to use time gate pieces is to open up time gates on weekends where there isn't a natural time gate occurring. And uh, hmm. what should I say about that? I don't know for sure if it's going to be in the upcoming dev blog, but I do know that updates to the time gate system in the game is something that we've been planning to do for a while. Um, so if it were me and I didn't have a champion that I absolutely needed right now, like if there's a champion that you need right now, then maybe you should open some time gates to try and get them. But if you don't, maybe maybe hold on to your pieces and and see see what's going to happen because you know we just did one uh, major shift with time gate pieces that changed <laughs> uh, you know it changed one way and back again quite quickly and you know like uh, you know we're going to continue iterating so um, yeah we'll see and like worst comes to worst uh, i don't think that the time gate pieces that are available in the shop now are going to disappear um, so yeah uh, uh, will there be a way in the future to get a free-to-play golden epic and or shiny for event champions? Um, that is a good question. I, I don't know if that's going to be addressed in Justin's thing or not. Um, to date, our policy or our, our, our working, the way that we have approached golden epic equipment cards is that they are only included as a sweetener uh, with weekend promotions or... or um, you know, with uh, purchases in the shop or through um, in-game events on occasion. Like the uh, uh, both Minsk and Donar have had Golden Epics available through um, collaborations with other with uh, with uh, with shows where you could play through their challenges. And um, you know, there was an Archon Golden Epic available as part of the console launch celebration. And uh, you know, are there going to be more ways to get Golden Epics? I, I can't say. That's uh, something that I'll have to wait for a uh, word from uh, Justin and Chris on. Um, yeah. Uh, Dr. Kodell, can I ask, what is the need for not letting us pick where blacksmithing contracts are applied? Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of a similar thing. And like, we don't let you pick the loot that shows up in your chests either, right? Like, um, it would allow you to just focus on one specific thing in a way that like imagine oh i'm gonna put all of my blacksmith contracts on warden's hex so i can use that to exploit the you know hex stacking and then swap warden in and out so it's a uh, it's just not something that we're likely to do you know um it's an intentional design decision for it to be random item among your six items on a champion and we do we do let you pick um which champion it is um so yeah that's kind of that's kind of where we're planning to leave it at least right now uh anyway so as we wrap this up there's a couple things i wanted to acknowledge uh first i wanted to give a huge shout out and thanks to uh, antoine jose for taking the time to stay up late uh, uh in, in france and uh, join me on stream to talk about you know, what is, quite frankly, a personal subject. I know he put it out there uh, on Twitter, but it, it's still, it's, you know, it's it was it was wonderful of him to share the story uh, of playing D&D with his grandmother and, and Terminator and how that, uh, you know, uh, the subsequent uh, fan response to it. Uh, it was really nice. So we really appreciate him taking the time to join us on stream today. Uh, this has been our show for Thursday, October 17th, 2019. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and participating in the Idol Champions and, of course, the D&D communities. Uh, you are awesome. If you're here, you're awesome. Uh, this show exists because of a number of amazing, 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 amazing people behind the scenes. Uh, uh, first and foremost, my co-producer, Erica, uh, as well as our partners at Dungeons & Dragons, Greg, Bart, Pelham, Allison, Schalling, and Lisa. 
Uh, usually up next on the D&D Twitch is Welch's Game Juice. However, I think Kate's on vacation. I could have sworn I saw a picture of her in a hot tub in uh, like New Zealand or something on the feed. So I think, I think uh, Kate's gone. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, and then, of course, there's a show about nerdy voice actors playing D&D uh, coming up at 7. So uh, take care, everybody. Uh, uh, just, uh, yeah. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a wonderful weekend. Cheers. <laughs>